folks, and welcome to Subjective Thoughts. And our book for today is Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. This is the first book in the Rivers of London series. Now there is murder, mutilation, blood, ghosts. It's some magic in this one. So if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Oh so, spoilers. Alright, um, I'm not, I think the publisher is Golenzak. This right here, I'm not certain. There might be because there's a G. I'll leave it here on screen. Uh, right now, I have no idea. Okay. There we go. So, Rivers of London is a book I've uh, seen here and there, I think, over the past two years, something like that. And uh, I was curious to read it, because uh, it sounded uh, right up my alley. And I bought it, this was my uh, last purchases from Book Depository before they abruptly closed. And I finally read it. I bought it this year. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this year they unfortunately closed. Book depository, I mean. So, yeah, this was uh, not what I expected it to be. And I warn again, I'm going into spoilers. So, the story is of a young uh, constable by the name of Peter Grunt. He wants to, you know, work as a detective, become an investigator. Detective. Yes, become an investigator. And uh, one night, as he, as he is on the job patrolling, he meets a ghost by the name of uh, Walt Penny. And from there, uh, things become very, very complicated and also very interesting. So from there on, Peter meets uh, Thomas Nightingale, who's uh, this sort of special uh, detective, but not, not detective. This is uh, all happening in Britain. He's an inspector. He's an inspector. And he's a, also a wizard. Yes. I, I was very surprised. I mean, what I read from the description, they don't really I think tell you much about the magic. At least not the description I read. So he, he's a wizard, and he tells Peter, you know, you want to become my apprentice. I will teach you how to do magic. Looks like Peter has a natural knack for it. Although based on the, this whole thing where um, they tell you where what you're going to do after two years of being a constable, and it seemed like he was just going to head into, uh, you know, f uh, writing up data information in the computer, making a valuable contribution. As, uh, as Peter put it. But, uh, well, that's it. After he meets Nightingale, that is no longer... Now he's going to become his apprentice. He packs up his stuff from where all the police uh, men work. Uh, I mean, where they live. And goes to the Foley, this mansion that uh, Nightingale lives in. And throughout the book, there's a, a series of these murders. You got a husband murdering his wife, and their uh, little baby, little baby son. There's, there's a series of aggressions and murders, and after these murders happen, the perpetrator, his face just falls off almost each time. And while this is all going on, there's also a problem with the rivers. Now, the rivers in this world have uh, gods, like Father Thames, uh, the, the mother of the rivers as well. And, you know, the, most gods are assholes. So they have uh, fighting. No, this is my area. No, this is my area. So on top of uh, trying to figure out these murders, Peter also has to... Uh, find a way to get them to uh, talk and to uh, come to uh, an agreement, a deal, so uh, well, so shit wouldn't start. Because there's the followers of father themes and of mother themes, so he has to do that as well. 
And uh, the, the following the whole uh, murder thing was really interesting. You know, the, the whole face is falling off. So, as Peter investigates it, there's also the children of the rivers, of uh, father themes and mother themes. And one of mother the themes' is a daughters uh, sort of get, gets in the way. Now, they have a plan. They find out who the um, murderer might be. Is this ghost from the past of, a, of an actor who was, um, who was murdered... And now uh, plays out this uh, one play called Punch and Judy. And then and, uh, they have the plan to stop him, but it is, uh, well, someone f uh, knows about it, stops it, and Nightingale gets shot. Peter gets locked out of the Foley and has to, to figure out a way of what to do. Uh, what, what to do next. Oh, and also at the beginning of the story, uh, uh, Peter gets a dog. The, the dog of the first murder victim. How does the whole murder start, uh, the series started is they find someone at the, at a square there, Covent Grove, I think it's called, and his head has been clean, it has been cut off clean. It's, uh, whew, some shit. And, right, so, Peter realizes someone knew from the inside and who could it have been. So he eliminates until he realizes that this the spirit, uh, Henry Pike, uh, that's the ghost, or at least he, he thinks it's mainly Henry Pike, but it's the spirit of vengeance and there's something else that's actually really controlling everything. Well, Henry Pike is inside of uh, Peter's friend Leslie. She is a constable as well. Um, they've been together since they, they started. I mean, both of them being constables. And uh, Henry Pike is sitting inside of her brain, basically. And uh, he's, the, he's the one, because Leslie was uh, in on it with, her, with them all, you know, working with uh, Henry, uh, Henry, sorry, w working with Peter and Nightingale and uh, the other um, inspectors there. There's this agreement among the supernatural and magic stuff and the police, apparently. So, and Peter uh, tells her this stuff. That's how she knew, and that's how she got someone to shoot Nightingale and throw the suspicion on him. Then he finds out that it's much deeper. It can't just be Henry Pike, so it's the spirit. And there is a plan for him to go and... Um, get to get to that spirit of vengeance but it's very dangerous and he uh, almost dies there's also this weird uh maid at the foley her name's molly and she's she's not a vampire but she's a sort of also blood-sucking possibly immortal creature but she seems to be more a sort of a spider monster or something like that or i'm not sure exactly She's some sort of monster, though, but not a vampire. So with her help, somehow she bites Peter. He he goes. Nightingale wakes up. He after the being shot, and he tells her what to do. Go to Mama Themes, bring her a really nice gift. He brings her a crate full of uh, drinks, a crates full of drinks. And he asks her, you know, to tell uh, the, the, her daughter, Tybone, Tyburn, oh, and Lady Ty, to let him get the Foley back. So the, the daughter has no choice. She lets him back in. And uh, then he gets Molly to bite him. And that sends him somehow to the world of the spirits. And this whole uh, thing has its own magic system. So he goes back in time. He chases not Henry Pike, the the spirit of vengeance and all that. He chases him until he uh, catches him, and then he brings him. Again, I'm I'm not sure how this works with the, with the magic, but Father Themes is back then when he was young, and he gives the spirit of vengeance to to him, and he kills it. Then he goes back to the present in the Foley, and uh, Molly almost uh, hurts him, almost kills him, but uh, Toby the dog 
that he uh, adopted saves him. So after that, he needs to to do something to save uh, to save uh, Leslie, as Leslie still has Henry Pike in her head. Now, and he does manage. He manages to save Leslie. Now, unfortunately, the damage has been done to her face. There's not much he could have done about that. He does wrap her up in bandages. They also have this doctor that works with them as well. He does the, the autopsies too. So the, the bandages are up, gets the spirit of Henry Pike, his ghost to leave her. And that's it. After that, he starts investigating another case. Uh, that maybe or maybe not Molly might have been involved in. A man's uh, penis being uh, eaten by a vagina. Like I said, Molly is some kind of monster. And the book ends with him... Uh, okay, so what they decided to do, to try to do to get some peace between mother themes and father themes... Uh, Thems, sorry, Thems. Is that they'll... She'll give one of her daughters... So, so the daughter will be with father themes, and he will give one of his children to do the same, as a show of good faith. And the daughter he brings is um, uh, Beverly Brooke. She and Peter have been uh, flirting throughout the book. He also kind of has the hots for Leslie, maybe. And, no, he, he does. So that's it, then. That's what the, where it ends, and... Um, he was, oh yeah, and then he and uh, Nightingale were uh, about to do something as well, I think. What were they? Wait. Um, let me just make sure I didn't get that wrong. I remember he and Nightingale did. I don't know, maybe it did just end with him delivering uh, Beverly Brook. Uh, let me check. Yeah, sorry, sorry. The, they were just delivering Beverly Brooke. Nightingale is still in the hospital. Alright, so that's the, the plot, more or less. I didn't go to uh, every detail in the event. <laughs> my, my apologies. I did spoil uh, quite a bit, like, like I warned at the beginning. So that's, uh, that's the story. When I got this, I thought it was going to be, uh, you know... Him investigate actual crimes, he'd be a very uh, talented uh, policeman, a young talented policeman, and um, yeah, it would just help solve crime, but no, it, it, it wasn't that. But still, uh, I, I really liked it, and I do love magic. The system of magic here is interesting, it's uh, very based on science. Uh, Isaac Newton actually started this whole uh, the Foley, this whole society. And so the magic also affects your brain when you use it. Because that's what happens to the victim of the spirit of vengeance in Henry Pike. Their brains are like, a, the, would they describe it, cornflower afterwards. They're all white. This is your brain on magic. So that was, uh, that was quite the thing. And, um, and and Peter also learns to do some, some simple magic here to create a light ball. Uh, a ball of light uh, makes something levitate. Made me think of uh, Harry Potter, but no wands or yelling out words. So yeah, magic is a lot uh, harder to do and, and dangerous in this uh, universe. Not like in Harry Potter, where you know they just use magic. I, I'm sure if they're tired, maybe they have less magical powers to use, perhaps. But here it's uh, well. Yes, here, here it's obviously a lot more, a lot different, a lot more different. And also, uh, Nightingale is um, somehow, not sure if immortal, but he's been alive for ooh, nearly uh, two decades. And uh, not decades, what I say. Nearly two centuries. And uh, it's not certain what that's from, if it's... Uh, it's a side effect of, I don't know, him doing something with magic. It still hasn't uh, yet been cleared here. I do look forward to finding out, because in the Foley, there's like a garage that used to be for carriages. And where Peter finds old portraits. 
One of them, uh, very possibly a nightingale. Back then. So overall, this was uh, the really first interesting book. It get the idea of how the magic works. That there's all these creatures that are described differently. They, you know, every every writer takes it differently. Like here, are the vampires they don't suck blood. Because there's a there's an incident with uh, him and Nightingale killing two vampires. They suck out the magic out of everything. Like magic here, when Peter uses magic, he destroys his electronic devices. The batteries just explode. So here the vampires suck out all the magic out of everything. Uh, so that's what happened. Because humans as well have uh, magic. You can suck that out of them. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a whole uh, different, uh, different system than what any I've read so far. But still, uh, very interesting. I want to continue on to the next book, the Moon Over Soho. I like Peter Grant. He's this absent-minded young man, just you know, wanted more out of uh, life. Uh, not not out of life, but more out of his job. He wanted to actually, you know, investigate serious things. And well, now he's certainly going to get a chance to. And uh, all the adventures you'll uh, get into, I'm sure. Because this is this series has eight books. I'm not sure if the eighth book is the last one or if there'll be more. I haven't checked. But yeah, quite a long series, though. Um, it's uh, It also has graphic novels already as well. Uh, I, lo I saw on Goodreads. So that's pretty cool, and tells you that this has been, uh, this is old. And this is some kind of new edition that I got, so, but this came out, uh, already cool, 2000-something. I'd be even before 2010, perhaps. Maybe around the 2010s. Again, I'm, I'm not sure. But still, not that good one, uh, it's got that British humor. As, as I confirmed today, uh, Mr. Aronovich is in fact, uh, an Eng uh, as I said, an Englishman. I, I kind of thought maybe he's uh, Russian because of the surname. Possibly. No, maybe he's Jewish. Aronovich is uh, the Jewish surname, I think. Yes, also, I really love this cover. Uh, this map in the blood. It actually says who's done the cover. It's by uh, uh, Stefan Walter. An image is the courtesy of some other artist. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I need to remember to write that down here. Yeah, I'll leave a picture here. Of what it says. Maybe that cool cover. And a uh, good story. I like the side characters as well. Uh, felt really sad for old Leslie. I do hope... They can do reconstructive surgery on her face. So hopefully they'll be able to save it somewhat. It is a sort of like a more realistic uh, take on magic. You know, it's not some spell, for instance, where I can easily just cure... Uh, not cure, but heal Leslie's face or save it somehow. Like in um, the spoilers for Harry Potter, in the um, in the second Harry Potter book, Harry uh, breaks and not breaks this. Is that guy's spell is done and his uh, he breaks. Uh, he broke his yeah. He broke his uh, his arm as he fell, and. Um, what was it? Ron tried to Ron tried to fix it, and it resulted in the bones leaving his body, disappearing from his body. So in Harry Potter, they just have a just have a potion for that. They let him drink, and his bones grow back. Here you don't have that. Here it's more well, it'll be reconstructive surgery. Even with Nightingale, they can't just perform some spell to heal the uh, the bullet he took to the chest. So there you go. 
A good one if you like a bit of realism and British humor, which... At least in this book, I understood way more. So it was kind of... I need to ask Mr. Gray to explain British humor to me. It's like, yeah, it's supposed to be like this sarcastic pointing the obvious, maybe? I'm not sure, but I, I did actually uh, like it here, unlike in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I wasn't a fan of it there. But that is the first book of uh, Rivers of London. If you like, uh, yeah, if you like books with detective work, uh, pol uh, police, uh, the police work, detectives, a bit of magic, maybe s magic that's uh, a bit more, uh, you know, more serious, uh, not, not, not more serious, but kind of, you know, not as that abs absorbed in fantasy, more grounded in uh, the laws of uh, physics and all that, then I think this one's for you. It's definitely an entertaining read. And uh, a nice uh, book series to start. Well, I'll see how the second book goes. Oh, uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. Uh, the, okay, so the series is named Rivers of London, which and I understand all these rivers in the book have a god. They have their own, their gods and shit. So does this mean that the conflict between the rivers is going to continue on throughout the eight books? Because it wasn't resolved here. It was the start of something, but who knows when that's going to work. You know, after Beverly is returned to her mother and the, the father themes his son, one son of his returns to him, what next? Is it just going to be Peter and Nightingale running around solving other cases of supernatural and magical stuff while simultaneously having to, uh, you know, make an agreement between the rivers? Because on one hand, yeah, it's not something that's going to be that easy to solve, especially with, you know, so many uh, rivers and stuff. But on the other hand, it's like, it took you eight books to solve it. Although, again, politics and a delicate issue. Oh, well, I suppose I will find out in the future. As I, well, if I continue, I'll go book by book here. All right, folks, so that is it. Uh, let me know, have you read Rivers of London? What did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Were you surprised it had magic? And that is it. Now remember, collect what you're passionate about and share it on YouTube. Bye! <laughs>